Graphite, graphite, graphite. Everybody knows that graphite anodes are such a key component within the lithium ion batteries that will help to drive the EV revolution around the world. But you might be wondering, how can you get exposure to the graphite sector? Today we'll be looking into a range of different ASX graphite stocks. Of course, this is not an exhaustive list. There are many out there, but hopefully this gives you a bit of an insight and a bit of a chance to dip your toes into the sector and have an overview into some of the different ASX graphite companies that are out there on the market. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. We make daily videos, so if you're new here, make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on so you won't miss a daily episode. Before we explore this range of different ASX graphite companies, it makes sense for us to take a quick step back and have a think about the broader graphite sector from a higher level. So really this overview is a bit of a follow up from our past video that we did last week. You can check it out on the channel if you are interested in taking a bit of a deeper dive into the supply and demand drivers behind the graphite sector, really getting an understanding about how graphite can play within the EV battery supply chain. I'd encourage you to check that one out after this, we'll leave a link to it. But for a quick insight, graphite anodes are a key component within the lithium ion batteries. Graphite is actually the largest component within the lithium ion battery by weight. I know when people hear lithium ion battery, they must assume that lithium is that core component. Of course it is, but graphite is actually the largest component by weight. In terms of demand, graphite still at this stage actually is predominantly used industrially. It's around about a quarter of the use cases is for EVs, but of course, as the electric vehicle adoption continues to increase, the demand for graphite anode, of course, will continue to grow as well. For the supply look, graphite and anode supply, which is a downstream aspect of the production, supply is still centralized in Asia with a huge amount of this all focused within China. As you can see here on the right there, you can see a bit of a makeup of a forecast that Bloomberg have provided about the long-term trends for vehicles around the world. At this stage, as we're all familiar with, currently the incumbents, ICE, or internal combustion engine vehicles, are making up the vast majority of vehicles that are sold annually. However, as we move closer towards the middle of the century, we can see that battery electric vehicles make up a much bigger proportion of total vehicles sold. And interestingly, out to 2040, as we can see on this forecast from Bloomberg, they forecast that around 60 million vehicles will be battery electric. For a bit of a contextual look, we can see that only around 70 to 80 million vehicles totally out of the entire fleet sold for new vehicles in 2020 was around 70 million. And so 60 million vehicles for battery electric is a huge amount of vehicles that will come online. And of course, many of the key components that will go into the batteries are going to be in great demand moving forward as a result of that. A quick little quote as well that was interesting from Elon Musk, the mercurial CEO of Tesla. He actually stated a few years ago that our batteries should be called nickel graphite because they're the key components within them. Of course, we know that battery chemistries continue to change, continue to evolve. Anodes at the moment are predominantly made out of graphite, but there is more looks into how these different types of compositions can change moving forward. But at this stage, graphite anodes are a key component and will likely continue to be for this next decade and if not further beyond that as well. We'd love to know your thoughts on it all, so drop in a comment below what you think about the graphite sector trends and your favourite companies within the sector. And a reminder before we dive in, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing we discuss on the channel is financial advice. The stocks we cover are not buy recommendations. These are all just that general discussion to be a starting spot for you to do your own research from. So stock number one, it's a name that's often synonymous with the ASX graphite sector. Telga Resources. ASX TLG has grown to around $500 million market cap. It's had a nice little uplift over this past period. And they are developing a vertically integrated supply chain within the EU region. We know that the EU is very accommodative for this transition towards clean energy and renewable energy. Their location in Sweden has got a significant clean energy and renewable energy hub, which helps them to bring down their embodied energy of their total project. And their focus is on ultimately becoming an ultra low emission producer of coated anode for greener lithium ion batteries. Of course, they are a vertically integrated process. However, their managing director has previously stated that yes, of course, I've got a mine, but in fact, they're a technologies company at their core, as they're really focusing on producing top quality anode at the end of their process. They go all the way from mine to product. They have a significant resource and they do have the ability to continue to scale and ramp up moving forward, contingent on, of course, demand. But it will be very interesting to see how they evolve moving forward. They're still waiting on a few key permits that ASX investors will be watching closely. They recently signed an MOU with LT Tech, which was interesting because it showed, of course, there's interest in their product and their project from Asia, even though they are located in the EU. And investors are continuing to watch potential binding offtakes coming online from European producers and manufacturers. 
All eyes over this next period for TLG are focused on the back end of November. We're moving towards a critical point in their story. They had an extension of their letter of intent with some discussions and negotiations with Mitsui and LKAB out until 30th of November for the co-development and a joint venture of their project. This of course would significantly de-risk the project and would bring significant validation to the total mission as well. All eyes will be on this, there's only a couple of weeks away, so it'll be fascinating to see how it evolves moving forward. Up next is ASX RNU, Renascor Resources, who trade around that $200 million market cap level. We're also looking to develop a vertically integrated operation from mine to market but with a natural flake graphite product. Their end product is PSG, Purified Spherical Graphite. And they're really building this and leveraging Sivia, which is the largest graphite reserve outside of Africa. And it's located in Australia, of course, the tier one jurisdiction within South Australia. They do at the moment have a range of non-binding offtakes with four different companies located within Asia. They've actually entered into offtakes that are non-binding for up to 60,000 tonnes per annum, including with the global conglomerate POSCO, who I'm sure many are familiar with. And their stage one capacity is actually only 30,000 tonnes per annum, so it shows a significant amount of demand. And now they are looking at potential expansions for stage two and expanding their capacity with the huge resource that they do have on their hands. We have previously interviewed the CEO and Managing Director of Renascore Resources, as well as a couple of other of the Managing Directors of some of the companies that we'll mention in the video. We'll leave links to those after this video that you can check out if you are interested in learning more about some of the companies that we do discuss today. Up next, stock number three is Syra Resources. They're trading around that $500 million market cap level. They own the largest natural graphite mining and processing operation globally. Of course, excluding China, the vast majority of the work is done within Asia. There's a bit of downstream processing and production done outside of China as well within Asia. But Syra Resources has been one of the first producers to come online outside of the Asian region. This is centered around their flagship project, the Balama Graphite Project. It's in Mozambique. It's an absolutely huge resource. It has the capacity of up to 350,000 tonnes per annum. It came online in 2017. There was a pause in 2020 due to market conditions, as well as, of course, the pandemic and the lockdowns that everybody's familiar with, but it's now restarted production in 2021. They're also looking at vertical integration as well and looking to add on the downstream too with their Vidalia project, which is located in the United States, which will help to position Syra as an integrated active anode material producer. The fourth ASX Graphite stock to watch, and this is actually the smallest company that we'll mention in today's video, ASX VRC, is Vault Resources. At the moment, they're positioning and continue to evolve as a multi-commodity battery minerals company. Their flagship project, when it does come online, will be the Banyu project, which is located in Tanzania. They have 100% ownership of this, and they do have a two-stage process to bring this online and for development. Earlier this year, there was a transformative and milestone acquisition, taking a 70% stake in the Ukrainian graphite business, the ZG Group, which is a long and storied history. It's currently producing as well, which of course is important. And it does give them that exposure into the European supply chain as well, which many companies are interested in. You think about Telga as well, because of the accommodative government, the push towards the renewables, and it's got one of the fastest growing EV markets as well. They've recently acquired Guinea Gold Projects too to give them that diversification as, as a hedge. And then just recently, some of the real interest surrounding the Vault Resources story. The back end of last week, they announced an acquisition of 100% of lithium license applications in Serbia acquired from Asena. It's a fascinating composition. It's quite an interesting proposition when you piece it all together. So it'll be an interesting to see how the story unfolds for Vault Resources. Another of the ASX Graphite stocks to watch is Ecograph. ASX EGR, they're trading around the $300 million market cap level. Once again, a vertically integrated battery anode materials business. You'll see how important taking some of the value downstream is with many of these types of companies. Of course, it's not just about extracting the raw materials, but it's about adding that value down the supply chain. Ecograph have developed their proprietary HF-free purification process for PSG. We know how important ESG and sustainably produced products are going to be and will continue to be moving forward, particularly as we move towards a net zero and an ESG-focused society. So in terms of projects, Ecograph have got their flagship battery anode material business located in Quinana, West Australia. Of course, it's quite a significant region in terms of the resources. Initial stage one, 5,000 tonnes per annum, and then an additional upgrade of 15,000 tonnes per annum for that. For stage two, they are also eyeing off potential European expansion with footprints potentially in Sweden as well as Germany. They will be fueling all of this and getting their raw resources from the Apanko project located in Tanzania. Tanzania, of course, is a huge hub for graphite resources. And then interestingly about Ecograph, 
They actually go all the way downstream as well and are considering carbon anode recycling. Lithium ion battery recycling is it's starting to get into the forefront of discussions. It hasn't fully arrived at a broader discussion yet, but we know how important this is going to be. And of course, it's going to be an important discussion as sustainability continues to rise to the forefront of these conversations surrounding the EV battery material supply chain. Magnus Energy, ASX m and has been in the headlines over this past period. They recently traded in and around that $600 million market cap level. They've come back down to around that $400 million market cap level after a range of different news articles and discussions over this past period. They're developing a vertically integrated lithium ion battery value chain. I think many people when they think of Magnus Energy probably think of their flagship factory, IM3NY, which is of course lithium ion battery cell manufacturing. They've got a huge amount of offtakes already signed for that. They recently provided an update for IM3 and why that it's around 40 percent they're in the semi-automated process now and they're looking to bring on fully automated process next year but what is interesting about magnus energy is they have the natru graphite project it is shovel ready the bfs has been completed but a lot of investors because they're so focused on mns's im3 ny and of course ultimately im3 townsville if that does come online in years to come I think many people probably have discounted or haven't really thought about Natri Graphite Project when considering the total valuation or the total sum of parts for Magnus Energy. If an offtake is announced for Natri Graphite, as has been discussed over this next period, it'll be fascinating to see how investors react to ASX m and and then Novonics, ASX NVX has been a true trailblazer for ASX EV battery materials companies. Of course, I've got their anode materials business, which is fascinating and it's why they've been included in this video. But ASX NVX is playing a key role within the, not only North American, but broader American EV battery materials supply chain. At the core of their offering is a battery technology solutions that they have. It helps to facilitate innovation, gives them oversight and insight into the broader battery material supply chain, gives them the ability to test, to iterate and to roll out and develop new products with their technical development. And of course, along with that, they're the first supplier of US made synthetic graphite anode material. They've got agreements with a couple of big heavy hitters with Samsung SDI and Sanyo. And I think what was really interesting as well was, of course, Philips 66 recently took a stake into Novonics. But I think thinking about what that helps to enable, which is the access to specialty coke supply, which of course is a key component of feedstock into the produ production of synthetic graphite, which is at the core of Novonics's anode materials business. Novonics has absolutely soared over this past period. They're in the four to $5 billion market cap level. If you think back to the back end of 2020, there was a lot of excitement surrounding Novonics. Was there the potential of them being announced in partnership with Tesla at their battery day? Remember, there was a huge amount of excitement and a run up to that. There was a sell off after that. Who would have thought that they'd be trading around that $10 mark now? But of course, I've got a world-class team. They've got significant understanding and capabilities within the technology development side. They're playing a key role within the EV battery material supply chain. So it's been a fascinating period for MVX and we'll see where they head from here. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out as well. As mentioned, we make daily videos each and every day. So if you haven't yet, make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on so you won't miss any of our daily episodes. We've interviewed a range of different CEOs and managing directors within the EV battery material supply chain, including some leaders from ASX Graphite companies. So we'll leave links to those up above that you can check out after this one. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a fascinating mega trend that we're seeing play out with the EV adoption around the world. And ASX Graphite companies have the ability to be key players within this mega trend moving forward. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know your thoughts on it all. Drop in a comment for now. Stay well and happy investing.